Bah, yang uh, yang dihormati Dr. Shuhaida uh, Muhammad uh, Shuhidan daripada Accounting Research Institute ARI selaku penceramah jemputan pada hari ini serta para hadirin uh, yang saya hormati sekalian. Uh, pihak Sekretariat mengucapkan ribuan terima kasih atas perhatian dan kesudian uh, yang berbahagia Datuk, Datin, Profesor juga Tuan dan Puan untuk menghadiri program pada hari ini iaitu Research Webinar Series 2.0 Um, dan semoga segala apa yang uh, dikongsikan oleh penceramah pada hari ini dapat kita gunakan semanfaatnya lah uh, Para peserta sekalian, uh, tanpa membuang masa, majlis dengan segala hormatnya menjemput uh, Dr. Syuhaida Muhammad uh, Syuhidan uh, untuk menyampaikan taklimat yang bertajuk Assessing Risk, uh, risk Through Data Analytics uh, Majlis dengan segala hormatnya mempersilakan Terima kasih Nadia Okay, so without wasting our time, can we start now? Okay, so for today I will be presenting on assessing risk through data analytics. So the title is a bit too general. Um, you can pop up to ask questions if you feel like. Okay, so this is a um, little bit about me lah. So I'm a senior lecturer from the Faculty of Computer and Mathematical Sciences. I'm also a research fellow in Accounting Research Institute. Um, so I've got my bachelor degree from University of Technology Petronas in 2004. Then I pursued my study in MSc IT in UITM. Then I was offered to do a PhD under the Young Lecturer Scheme in 2012 to do a PhD in the School of Computer Science in IT in RMIT University of Australia. Then in 2015, um, I did a data science specialization. It's a certification from John Hopkins University. And this is when I started to join ARI and expand my knowledge in data science. In 2017, I joined the CEO faculty um, 2.0, cycle one. Uh, so this is very much like an industrial attachment for me to know what is outside, um, to, get, to gain some experience um how corporate life is then in 2018 uh, i was um i did a certification uh, to be a polygraph examiner so um, this certification is about one year so after one year we got the certified polygraph examiners so in total i have 50 publications until now um have 24 grants um and also we have more than 20 innovation awards. So for today, I'll be sharing um, some of the innovations that uh, we have, uh, our group has worked on and also some of the publications. So when the title was given, it was a bit uh, general. So um, as the title has two sections, so I'll be delivering the talk based on first on the general on the data analytics so i'm going to give a general a general very general topic not too technical and not to um not to delve very much into uh, the areas um that ari is doing research so okay so first we go an overview of what is data analytics okay so first um we look at um the broad area of data science. So what is data science? Data science is the collective application of data collection, processing, manipulation, and interpretation using tools and techniques from math, stats, computation, uh, computation and domain expertise. So basically, um, data science doesn't belong to, to only um, the, computation, the computation side. It's a very, it's a, it's a general, is a general subject that everybody should share and put their feet in the area. Okay, so the data analytics for me is very much of the how. Okay, the process of examining data sets in order to draw the conclusion about the information they contain from the data set increasingly with the aid of specialized system and software. The data analytics technology and techniques are widely used in commercial industries to enable organization to make more informed business decision 
and by scientists and researchers to verify or disprove scientific models, theories, and hypotheses. Okay, so data analytics refer to qualitative and quantitative techniques and process used to enhance productivity and business gain. So usually the data is extracted and first we usually categorize to identify and analyze behavioral data and patterns. So from there, um, we, uh, we study further, um, pinpoint which, uh, which, which areas or which dimension that we should be focusing on. So then we work on, work on the techniques very according to the organization requirements. Okay, so this is the basic idea from the data, then um, the how we apply analytics, how you make sense of the data and uncover meaningful trends. So uh, as I said, we find the trends. Then we get some insight, the value obtained through the use of analytics. It looks easy, but usually um, um, when we have a project, it, it's not that easy to find the insight, to get the insights. Okay, so what is what is, it, what is inside? What is the power of inside? Imagine if you have an e-commerce app. So the data might show uh, that your users had 2,000 sessions in the past 30 days. Okay. Analytics could show you how many sessions occurred on iPhone in Malaysia. The how. Okay, so the insight could reveal that the session on iPhone were 20% less likely to buy. Okay, so we can do this kind of analytics to get some of the insight so that we can get our targeted customers. So this is the three stages of data analytics. So based on value and complexity, first we have descriptive. Okay, we're working from down to the top. So usually most of the projects these days is more on descriptive. Uh, so what is descriptive data analytics? We use aggregation and data mining to provide insight into the past. We want to look at what has happened. What has happened? So what has happened in the past? So we study past data, um, we conduct analysis, uh, we come up with a conclusion then next stage is doing predictive prediction. Usually we use statistical model and forecast techniques to understand the future, what could happen. This is what the companies, most companies aim to do. Um, usually, um, as you can see, some of the good examples are from the marketing, uh, marketing areas. They usually predict what we bought then uh, they will propose what you will buy in the future. Okay, so the next stage is prescriptive. You use optimization and simulation algorithms to advise on possible outcome. What should we do? Prescriptive is very much like um, medicine. Uh, you suggest and advise on the possible outcome. Okay, usually every data set has a story to tell. Okay, so usually when we have a data set, we will, we will ask where did this data come from? What information does it count? What are the fields? So you usually study the fields first. Okay, what sort of stories you can tell us? Uh, what will we be able to learn? What is missing? What type of data it is? Is it uh, geographical, chronological or categorical? Does the type of data give clues about what sort of stories it might contain? Okay, and some other questions. Okay, so based on data, data analytics, so this is the three general domain. First is domain knowledge. Um, for me, as I've been doing projects on this, uh, computer science is very much applied. Okay, but the main thing is that um, the most important thing is the domain knowledge. If you don't know or if you don't understand the domain knowledge quite well, the computer science uh, team or the computer science domain won't be able to work well. Okay, same goes to the statistic maths. 
the most important thing is that to understand the domain knowledge. So usually if you get a project, the computer science domain, I mean the computer science part, we'll need to work hard to understand the domain knowledge like myself. Um, uh, working with the RE fellows, so it's very much working with the accounting area. So initially it wasn't easy, until now it wasn't easy. Uh, we'll usually work on different projects. So in different projects, you'll need to understand different areas, different, um, different field, um, which will take some time, usually will take some time. Okay, so what is important is first the teamwork, second is the communication, you always need to communicate. Um, the third, last but not least, um, is the general education. So for a researcher, um, you always, you need to read more uh, to understand the domain knowledge. Okay, so these are the three core skills areas that are needed. Usually, um, you need to ask good questions ask question, ask question, ask questions. So the difference between um, usually when we do research, when you do data analysis, usually you know what you want to analyze. So these days, when you talk about analytics, you'll get the data, then the data will tell you something that you don't know, okay? So that's why you will need to keep on asking good questions. Um, so, um, so if you look at, uh, if you do descriptive analysis, then you look at uh, what are the anomalies, what are, what are the outliers, what are the, the patterns that you can see, then you work further on that. Okay, then know the constraint, uh, that's the business skills area, decision making, and then, and then you go to the analytic skills, which analytics to choose, the how. So which approach do you want to use? Do you want to do classification? Do you want to do um, some other techniques um, to approach in order to answer the good questions that you have from your business skills just now? Okay, um, then we'll go to the IT skills whereby uh, you should have a high performance computing. This is when you talk about uh, big data analytics, okay? But when you work on data, it's not all the time. It has to be a big data analytics project um, because the question until now is people keep on asking, how big is big the data? Okay. So um, initially, like um, five years back, we thought uh, big data analytics, the project need to be a tera, tera, tera size. But these days, um, when we do research, um, um, five figures of data is quite enough when to do research, um, academic research. Okay, so now we look at the second section of my presentation. So just now we look at the overview of data analytics. So now we look at the data analytics applications. These are some of the applications in data analytics. First is travel. Okay, so um, in 2017, um, I joined a hackathon, mass hackathon. So they do this dynamic pricing. Um, hackathon is where you present your ideas, you pitch your ideas. It's a competition um, whereby you stay there for like two days, 48 hours. Uh, you do some pitching. Uh, based on the data given or some of the data that you have one of the some of the projects they propose is doing dynamic pricing how will you do pricing how will you propose to do a dynamic pricing uh, based on last minute FA tickets um, early which is the best day to buy to buy ticket what time is the best time you want to buy a ticket, you do want to understand your customers best so that you can sell better. Next, predicting flight delay. Okay, that's quite difficult. Uh, but then you can work on the weather forecast uh, to associate it with uh, the flight delay problems. Okay, so next, number two, marketing. 
Okay, marketing is where data analytics is uh, broadly used. Upselling, cross-selling, predicting lifetime of value of customer, customer chain. Customer chain research is widely um, done, especially in telco. So how do you know? Um, as you can see, um, we have DG, we have telco, uh, we have uh, telecom. Sorry, DG, Cellcom. So as you can see, um, DG keep on updating or changing its plan to suit the customers. So they don't want customers to change, to change from, and they also want to steal customers from the other telco providers. So that's customer chain. Number three, healthcare. This is prediction. Okay. Like we have today, um, COVID-19. Okay, medication, uh, effectiveness, and others. Okay, number four is social media, sentiment analysis, and digital marketing. Okay, so we'll be, we will be discussing on sentiment analysis later. And number five on sales, discount offering, demand forecasting, like faith, they offer discount, coupons, and everything for us to purchase more things. To boost up sales. Uh, number six is automation, IOT, self driving cars, pilot aircraft, drones. Number seven, credit and insurance, claim prediction, fraud and risk detection. Okay, this is some of the usage of data analytics. Okay, so this is the portion, this is the portion where I would like to share uh some of our work the work that we have done based on our um, based on our projects uh, that is showcased in some of the innovations competition like idex itex mtp pachita uh and also itex okay and also some of the public related publication so when i was given this topic it was a bit too general risk assessment so how would I, I will scope it down? So I'll be having a team today. Uh, so today I'll be talking all the related projects that is related to financial market. Uh, financial market is a place that uh, brings buyer and seller together to trade in financial assets such as stock, bonds, commodities, derivatives and currencies. The stock market has been linked to economic growth and also risk, okay? What kind of risk is associated to stock market? Okay, through its role as a source for new private capital. Economic growth may also be a catalyst for stock market growth. This is sort of like a, you can do predictions to it. One of the most debating issues in the economy is whether the stock market can be an important indicator for future economic growth forecast or vice versa. Uh, so it's many believe that substantial decline in stock prices reflects the future economic downturn, while high stock prices may reflect expectations of future economic growth. Okay, so I'm going to divide um, uh, the this financial topic market into three three. Um, Three, uh, three subsections. That is first, fundamental analysis, then technical analysis, last but not least is sentiment analysis. Okay, so I'm going to explain what is fundamental analysis based on financial market, yeah? Okay. Fundamental analysis is a method of evaluating securities but attempting to measure the intrinsic value of the stock Fundamental analysis, uh, study everything from overall economy and industry condition to the financial condition and the management of companies. The biggest part of fundamental analysis involves delving into financial statements. Okay, as, as you are familiar, um, the researchers from accounting perspectives, they do research, uh, this kind of research, a fundamental analysis based on financial statements, okay, um, such as like annual report, okay, and others. 
also known as quantitative analysis. This involves looking at revenue, expenses, asset, liabilities, and all other financial aspects of the company. Financial analysis, um, financial analysts look at this information to get in, to gain insight on the company's future performance. Okay, the aim to predict, but the prediction at the moment is very much based on the expertise of the fundamental analysis. Okay, not very much using um, AI. Okay, these are some of the projects that um, we have. Uh, that I've joined um, uh, through um, through Ari Fellows and some of the lecturers from accountancy faculty. Uh, so these are the projects that we have showcased in as I said in the innovation competitions. Um, so we have professional judgment EPV, ethical personality value apps uh, in 2016, yeah, cash flow analyzer my financial risk prediction and analysis my FinPA. so in 2017 um this is these are the list of the projects um, that we showcase so in this section first i would like to share this project cash flow analyzer which we have um, improvised in 2017 uh, we name it cash flow analyzer and predict version 2 smart cfp Okay, so cash flow analysis, what we did actually. So this is basically my early years in ARI. So I've been learning quite a lot this. So this is a, this is a dashboard that we've created uh, to study on data sets um, of uh, distressed companies and non-distressed companies. Uh, so we uh, collected data uh, from the database of these companies then we study some of the financial ratios and we uh, we put it in a dashboard. So we have the financial and cash flow ratios to predict firms' financial distress. Okay, so PN17 indicates uh, distressed companies. Okay, the second project um, that I would like to share is the financial risk prediction and analysis, my FinPA. So we have it, uh, we actually... Um, this is a work that uh, that I work with Dr. Smiley Hasnan. She started um, years before that, probably in 2012. So this is a very uh, very established research, you can see. So in 2016, I started to join. Um, so we do uh, 2016 my financial risk prediction analysis, my FinPA 2.0. 2017, we upgraded it to 3.0. We've also got uh, PRGS grant to support this project. So what is my FinPA? My FinPA is a system to assist business decision maker, including financial analyst and analyst and investor. So it acts as a tool to benchmark and assess the financial strength of a company and also financial risk of an organization by using financial and non-financial data from annual reports. Okay, so it may assist um, our target, uh, target user as uh, in preliminary analysis of an in quality, a stock signal selection, selection signal. So we just want to check if that company is healthy or not. And also a risk descriptor. Okay, how does the dashboard look like? So initially on the left side, we have Excel. So we only have Excel, all the data are there. We have lots of data there. Then uh, we have a very simple dashboard. So we only have analysis, we do simple predictions. Uh, my fin PA version 3, uh, we upgrade a little. Uh, we add up on visualization. Okay. Then we work out on the um, on the outlook. How it should like, uh, how it should looks like, and we simplify things a little. Um, we don't want to show everything, so yeah. So for now, we can do prediction based on uh, distress and also EM Jones. 
So we have now a calculator which we can predict. Let's say if you have a company, then you flip out, you look at its working capital, then you put in a value. Then you can predict whether the company is financially healthy or unhealthy. Okay, so all this, all this, the model behind it um, is based on, as I said, a very extensive research that has been conducted. Okay, moving on to the second part of analysis is technical analysis. We don't do much work on technical analysis because as I can see, it's quite established that the technical analysis. Technical analysis look at the price movement of a security price and use this data to predict future price movement. So meaning to say you look at the price daily and you have a chart. So you study the chart, then you predict um, based on the chart what is the price, what is the next uh, value um, price will be open tomorrow. Technical analysis has been popular among investors and financial analyst, analysts. Okay, so investors uh, like to study the charts uh, in order for them to predict which uh, stocks that they'll buy and when is the best time to sell. Okay, so candlestick Candlestick is one of the technical analysis approach. Okay. Okay. Last but not least is sentiment analysis. What is sentiment analysis? Sentiment is an opinion. Okay, whether it's positive or negative, views, attitudes, emotions, or judgment about entities or aspects of entities of the opinion holder at a very specific specified time. Okay, it can be a product, a service, event, person, organization, or topic that consists of aspects that represent both the components and attributes of an entity. So a sentiment analysis based on our scope today, uh, stock market. So first, we usually want to look at the organization. So what is the organization name? So we tag the organization name, then we look at what are the words that, it, that is associated to the organization. Then we do opinion mining, whether um, it's positive or negative, okay? Um, we also look at the person that is associated to the organization, the board, board of directors. So if something negative impact, negative impact associated to that person, which is associated to the organization, we also can do opinion mining to it. Same goes to event and also, yes, product or services. Okay, so one of the project that, um, that I've created a dashboard on is in 2018, we work on financial headline sentiment analysis dashboard. Okay, so this is for this project, we've created the polarity words dictionary using general words with positive and negative polarity. So we conducted the appropriate requirement to design the tool to visualize Malaysia financial news headline sentiment dashboard. So after completion of the analysis, the type result will display on the graph through the dashboard. So initially, when we start on this project, when I start on this project, um, well, when you do research, then you understand that um, there's still some flaws in it because we use general words. Whereas um, in business, so I forget. Uh, so for this project, we uh, we extract English financial news headlines. Okay. So for this project, I realized that um, for business section, they have um, at times they have different language to represent something to represent um, the meaning. So we don't get a accurate result at the moment. So we have uh, we have tested it on few algorithms. Uh, and we got the score for each title. Uh, we also can associate it to um, the, the organization or the companies. So let's say for the first one, headlines, KWAP plan, 270 million UK asset value. So um, it scores for the first algorithm is zero. We've tested a few algorithms. So we also can tag how many um, how many headlines is associated with KWAP? We have the data for 2015, 2016, and 2017. But this particular research is only um, 
we only limit it to English because um, there's a lot of corpus outside there um, for um, using English language as compared to Malay at the moment. Okay, mm -hmm. so we can do count. Um, then uh, daily we can have a word cloud. Um, what are the most used words for for that particular time? Okay, based on the sentiment analysis, uh, based on the words, um, the news sentiment that we extract from the newspapers. It's not only limited to the dashboard. We also had um, published papers. Okay. So in 2018, we published a paper sentiment analysis for financial news headline using, uh, using machine learning algorithm. So we gathered the data from 2015 to 2017, which contained four, almost 5,000, 4,779 total of sample data. We extract randomly from NST. Okay. Uh, but then we had to screen out. Uh, we had to filter it uh, because we only wanted to uh, relate only to financial headlines. Okay, so in 2019, we have another paper, Prediction of Malaysian Stock Market Movement Using Sentiment Analysis. Uh, okay. uh, so we have a data collected from two, so two sources over a period of 11 months from January 2018 to 30th November of 2018. So within this period, there are 223 days. But this particular, for this particular research, we only focus on one organization that is Genting Berhad. So uh, that, uh, we have 41 articles that is related to Genting Berhad. Then we see the correlation um, if, uh, the sentiment analysis has any correlation to its price. Okay, so you can um, read the paper if you're interested. Okay, so since then, um, uh, till now, I have like um, three or four postgraduate students doing research in this particular area. There's a lot to there's a lot to studies in this area, so they are doing research in this area. Um, um, to study on corporate reputation that is associated to this area and also to create a corpus based on um, financial financial headlines and also the, its content. Okay, so basically that's the three sections that I want to share. Okay, so yeah, so for the others, uh, for the other risk project, uh, I think you can ask question if you want to ask any of these other risk project. Ah, oh, is it? Ah, uh, yeah. Observation matters. It's um, it's easier to deal with numbers rather than observation. I guess. Yes, it's easier to work on. Numeric. <laughs> if you do programming, it's easier to work on numeric. Uh, if you do research in using text, if you do research using text. Um, as you can see, um, if you have a title, if you have a title, um, you have to get it to its root words, okay, for for the for your program to understand the word. Observation is very much a qualitative approach, so your response can be quite broad. Are we able to generate mathematical modeling by performing the analysis? Yes, I also, um, in future, I also plan to work with the lecturers from the mathematical maths, maths department um, from other universities. They, uh, we want to work on stock market prediction. We want to work on the mathematical modeling of stock market prediction, yes. Political scenario, political scenario is very much um, human <laughs> so it involves very much of human how do i say mr D um, mr denny um it's very much of human perspective so yeah we may can predict but uh behavioral behavioral study i don't think um it's very um clear if you want to do a very clear analysis or analytics on it 
what about social science area? How can you use data analytic method? Dr. Norlina, may I know specifically social science area? What social science area do you mean? Business and management. Okay, so business and management, if you're keen on doing um, stock market prediction, it's obviously the area, human resource area, yeah, in human resource area, uh, you can do prediction when your staff will leave the company. <laughs> Uh, how to sustain your staff. Um, I've spoken to this one company, they want to do, yeah, by retention, they want to do um, study on the gap of what kind of trainings that, uh, yes, what kind of training that uh, their company, uh, I mean their staff need based on, um, based on individual. Um, it's not like one size fit all. So you study this person has uh, completed this kind of training, this kind of training, this kind of training, as an organization or as an HR um, HR manager. Do you think that um, the trainings you have um, maximized the potential of that particular stuff uh, based on the training that you have given, or what is the trainings that that person need based on the yearly yearly performance? Okay, what are the tools, programming language that you usually use to perform analytics and sentiment analysis? Um, I, um, I, I, um, I use a lot of R language to conduct data analytics and sentiment analysis. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Manjazira. Any other questions? So, as I see over and over again, um, data science is not only for computer science, computer science uh, people. It goes across um, for those who can work on programming, work on programming. But there are a lot of existing tools they can use, you can apply. Um, for myself, um, I also have uh, students from social science. I have a few students from RE, which they do uh, background in accounting. So it's not necessary I would expect them to do programming. They can use some of the existing tools. They can, we can suggest from time to time to get to the, uh, uh, to, to, uh, to answer their research questions. From your information, for your information, have used to predict victory of it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, it's a good thing. Okay, that's very true. Uh, PH was very, how do you say, um, at that point of time, PH was very aggressive in collecting um, all the sentiments, okay, all the sentiments, um, that's how they won the war, <laughs> yep, that's how they win, that's how they won at that point of time, as is Dr. Nolina, existing tools such as, okay, Link latihan. Okay, itu lain ya. Okay, existing uh, tools. Um, Dr. Nolina, are you keen in doing sentiment analysis? Okay, data analytics and AI, any connection? Yes. Um, artificial intelligence is very much, so let's say you want to take one expert's brain out. Okay. Um, then you put it in the computer. So very much a self process of whatever, whatever data that you have. So analytics is how. Um, so the AI is very much of the approach, of how you want to do it. Yes, Dr. Nolina, please contact, please contact me for further questions. Mm -hmm. Okay, how about science fields such as biology? How do we use the analytics method? Um, Dr. Tawasuria, you will need to uh, give me um, which particular side of biology that you want to study. You are doing research on. So we'll need to understand the domain, as I said over and over, environmental science. There's a lot of things that you can do in that particular research. Um, is there anything that you want to predict in environmental science? Yeah, water quality, true. But anyway, anyhow, you should start with the data, with the data sets. So if you have a data set, first, as I said over and over again, do descriptive analysis first. 
then you'll see if there's anything interesting to study in particular in any of the uh, variables that you have. Yes, if you have any further question, you can ask me after the sessions. You can drop me an email, my UITM email. Um, happy to help. It's very interesting if you have the data set, uh, then you'll see what you can do with it. How, yeah. Uh, you're welcome, Dr. Mo. Thanks, Doctor. Uh, you're welcome. Thank you, everyone, for listening. Thank you very much.